This video will briefly uh, demonstrate the R code for performing the logistic regression examples discussed in the supplementary YouTube videos. We are uh, working with the low birth weight data with a single dichotomous outcome, two independent variables. The first is continuous, weight at last menstrual period. The second is dichotomous, smoking status during pregnancy. We're going to look um, individually at the relationship between each independent variable and the outcome using a simple logistic regression model, and then we'll look at them together in a multiple logistic regression model. Here are the three models, um, weight at last menstrual period, smoking status, and then the two together. And uh, so we're going to show the R code to estimate um, each of these beta coefficients in the different models, and uh, we'll show how to generate that. So here, here's the beginning of the code. Before I do that, let's jump over to um, the website because I want to show you, I'm going to download and set up a project real quick. So in the um, resources, class materials, module 9, video materials folder, resources folder on the website, you'll find a uh, PDF of slides of both the simple logistic and multivariable regression um, videos as well as slides uh, for this video and the R code which I'm going to click and download. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. <clears throat> that file is associated with our studio so it opens directly in our studio. Here's the code we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and start a project so I'm going to create a project uh, clicking up here. Now I'm going to uh, start this as a new project in a new directory. I'll call it uh, video show and it's a subdirectory of uh, uh, this is where I keep all my R projects so I'm going to create the project and now we're in that folder now notice that it um, just killed my uh, file so I need to go open that uh, file that I had open so I'm going to browse over to my downloads folder and hopefully uh, find that code. I've downloaded it several times here. I'll just grab this and that opens it. Now notice though that that I just opened it from my downloads folder so what I really want to do here is go ahead and do a save as and I want to put it into this project folder so I don't lose it um, later. I just need to go to our projects open this up my video show and now I can save it here and there it is. So now I've got uh, my project set up. I got all my code. And so let's go ahead and return back to uh, slide presentation for a minute here. And I want to walk you through um, the beginning of this code. So um, the first thing, there's everything in green, of course, is comments. The first thing we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to install some packages. Now we've discussed this a little bit. These are different libraries of R commands. Um, that are available to download that have uh, functions that um, you know depending on what you're trying to do and these three HMIS, Mosaic, and LM test have some uh, commands that we want to use uh, for generating the code for this logistic regression. So the install.packages command here downloads uh, notice the, per, the um, quotes downloads each of those packages and then the library commands here for each one actually loads them into memory so they're now available to use those commands we have an options uh, command to specify how many digits we want to see to just control the look at the output and then the actual low birth weight data is um, stored on my website and so we're going to download that and then use the load command once it's downloaded to load uh, low birth which is uh, the data set of interest so then uh, in the file that uh, you can just follow along we have uh, documentation of the low birth weight data there are uh, some other variables in the data set we're not going to use them um, we're just gonna uh, focus on these for the time being and so uh, I just want to show you some basic uh, data summary um, commands to kind of get an idea of what's going on in this data we're not going to spend a lot of time on this but so we have a, a couple of summary commands and we're using a, uh, a different summary command than we did at the beginning of the class. We've showed you this uh, summary a few times and it's using this thing called fun equal fav stats and it's um, got a slightly different structure here with a tilde and a plus and we'll, I'll show you in a second what that does and so we're going to show some um, 
some summary statistics for low, which is the outcome, and for LWT, which is the weight at the last uh, menstrual period. And then we're going to create a table here using some of the code that we've shown you before in the categorical module of creating a two-by-two -two table of looking at smoking status versus the outcome low birth weight. So here's our first summary command. And so notice the syntax here that we have low, which is the outcome, um, tilde smoke plus LWT, right? Those are the variables that we want to break down uh, our summary of low by. And data equals low birth specifies the data set, so we don't need to use the dollar sign notation in describing these variables because we're specifying the data set. And then this fun equal fav stats helps gives this uh, this nice output that we have here. So, so let's look at what's in this table. So we have 189 observations shown right here. And then we've got a variety of summary statistics uh, across the columns. And let's look what's happened. So the variable of interest in this summary uh, command is low, which is uh, low birth weight, um, normal or below birth weight. And what we've asked um, to be done here is to show us the um, the frequency or and the summary statistics for low stratified by smoking status. And so what we see in this table here when we look at smoke is that 115 uh, of the uh, participants were not smoking during, did not smoke during pregnancy, 74 did. And within each of those groups, the mean here, remember, the mean of a 0, 1 variable, which is how we have smoke coded, I should have showed you the data, but um, is uh, uh, the proportion of ones. And so what we have here is a mean of 0.25 means that 25% of the women who did not smoke during pregnancy had low birth weight babies versus 40% in the uh, among those women who did smoke during pregnancy. Right. So so the mean here is just the proportion uh, represents or the represents the proportion of those with uh, a low birth weight. And so that's kind of uh, consistent with our uh, intuition that um, there may be a relationship between smoking status during pregnancy and low birth weight. So the next um, row here with LWT, what uh, has been done is it's essentially broken this continuous variable of weight at last menstrual period up into quartiles essentially and it's given us the the number of subjects that fall within each of those quartiles and again if we come over here to the mean column we're given the proportion of those with a low birth weight baby. And so again it kind of makes sense that 46 percent of the 54 women that uh, were in this first quartile of weight uh, had um, a low birth weight baby. And so it uh, looks like there may be an association between uh, low weight at last menstrual uh, period and um, low birth weight. So these are summary statistics. And then overall down here, we see that overall there was 30% uh, had low birth weight babies. So this is just summary information uh, letting us know what's going on. This is one way we can do it. Now we can do a, a similar table where LWT is the focus and that we're asking to summarize LWT by the outcome, um, low birth weight, and overall. And so here, um, we have the mean uh, weight of those who uh, were not um, low birth weight was 133 versus uh, those who were low birth weight was 122, just giving us an idea of what the numbers look like within those categories, that dichotomous category of what uh, the weight was. And then overall, we see that the average weight at uh, last menstrual period in the entire cohort was 129.7. So now we can um, use, this is a similar syntax as we used in, let's see, that would be <clears throat> module seven, I think, to create, um, we've put the outcome in the columns here, uh, zero for normal, one for below normal, and then smoke yes, no on the rows. And again, we get similar information that we had in the previous uh, couple of commands. But here's the frequency table showing that um, there were 115 uh, who did not smoke during pregnancy, 74 who did. Among those who smoked during pregnancy, uh, 30 were below normal, 44 were uh, normal. 
So those are summary statistics. So now let's go and look at the uh, results of the first lo uh, logistic regression model, looking at the relationship between weight at last menstrual period and uh, low birth weight. And this is the result we saw from the previous uh, presentation. And so what we really want to focus on down here is we want to show how to replicate these uh, statistics as well as these ones up here. And so the code is, is fairly straightforward. Um, <clears throat> we use what's called uh, the GLM, General Linear Model Command, or function. So I'm going to create an object here called glm.logit and I'm going to store in that object the logistic regression model where uh, low birth low is the outcome and low birth dollar sign LWT is the uh, independent variable and so the type of general linear model I'm running is um, uh, we have to specify the family of the general linear model which is binomial and in parentheses we say logit this is how we get a uh, logistic regression model run. And then the second command here, which I've made a mess of now that I've drawn so much, is we uh, take a summary of that um, object that we've created, and this here is uh, the output that we're provided with. I've uh, put a red rectangle upon uh, around the most important part of the output, and this gives us the two beta coefficients, the beta zero, which is the intercept, which we're really not interested in, and the low birth weight um, LWT, or the weight at last menstrual period. And so these are the um, estimates on the logit scale here. Here is the Z value. It's slightly different than what we saw here of 2.28, um, but there's 0.024 is the p-value, which is the same p-value that we had from the video. Now to get uh, additional information, uh, to get the confidence interval, uh, we can generate that on the logit scale using this code here. Um, we create an object called ci.logit, and what we're doing is we're combining two different things. We want um, the estimate from this logit model, uh, which uh, we create an object called estimate equal to the coefficients of the GLM logit object that we created, the general linear model, and then we use something called confidence conf int dot default and that will generate the confidence limits for the um, the GLM object that we created and so um, this gives us uh, so if we just then look at the CI dot logit object we've created we have uh, the estimate and the 2.5th and 97.5th so this is the lower confidence limit and this is the upper confidence limit of the 95 percent confidence interval and we're primarily focused on um, the uh, LWT variable. We're not interested in the intercept. So once we have the ci.logit object, we can then simply exponentiate it as we discussed in the video. And now this, this uh, rectangle down here, red rectangle box, gives us the LWT odds ratio of 0 0.99 and then the lower confidence limit of 0 0.98 and the upper confidence limit of 1.00 rounding off. Okay. All right, so here's the second logistic regression model that's looking at the relationship between smoking status and um, low birth weight. And again, we're going to uh, run a similar model that's going to give us uh, these numbers here so that we can summarize the model. So again, we create, a, I'm going to use the same object name, glm.logit. Um, here, uh, low birth dollar sign low is uh, specifying the low birth is the data set name, dollar sign the variable name. Then we have um, low birth smoke is the independent variable. And again, we specify that the, the family for this model is the uh, logit, um, which is specified using binomial and logit as shown here. And then again, here are the, the estimates in the red rectangle and we see that the uh, estimate is 0.704 and a z value of 2.2 and a p value of 0.03 so we use the same uh, syntax here to create a ci.logit object that combines uh, the estimates with the confidence intervals on the logit scale we exponentiate that and we get um, our 
odds ratio of 2.02 .02 with a confidence interval from 1.08 to 3.78. So really with essentially four lines of code for a, a simple logistic regression model we can generate um, the estimates, uh, confidence intervals, odds ratios. So let's look at the last model, logistic regression number three. Here we have um, a slightly different summary. We have a chi-square of 10.2. In the video it had been a G statistic that was a, a from a different from the StatCrunch software. Uh, we're using R here so it's a slightly different uh, statistic. P-value 0.006 and then we have the rest and of our results. And notice here that we have um, several different things. We have a likelihood ratio test for the global null hypothesis. This is um, analogous to the F statistic and linear regression or analysis of variance. Then we have the odds ratio for each of our independent variables um, along with p-values. So uh, we run a very similar model to what we do for the simple logistic. We, we're going to create a same, uh, the same named object. It's got the same outcome. The difference is we're putting both of the explanatory variables in and we're just separating them with a plus sign. So it's low birth LWT plus low birth smoke. We still have the same family um, for this model. And now here we have um, our estimates for the intercept for uh, LWT and for smoke. And so these are the individual uh, Z values and P values for those. Both uh, are significant at the 0.05. But um, notice that this output doesn't give us a global test. And so we're still interested in that. I'm going to first let me show you the, the we can create the confidence intervals doing the exact same syntax that we used in the simple logistic regression model um, because uh, it, it knows that when we work on that glm.logit all the estimates um, from the different variables in that object will be uh, included and so we have the estimate and confidence interval on the logit scale and then we have it the actual odds ratios of 0.99 and 1.97 we see that um, the results are very similar between the individual models and this combined model the last thing is to um, do a global test we can do what's called a likelihood ratio test this will make a little more sense after we've had some discussions in module 9 in class but this tests the overall fit of the model we're using something called the LR test we apply that to our glm.logit function LR test is uh, coming out of one of the packages that we loaded at the beginning of this session and we look down here at the uh, p-value a 0.006 and this indicates that there is um, some structure in our data indicating that at least one of our coefficients is um, has some kind of significant association with the outcome so uh, we'll go over some more of this in class but I just wanted to show you uh, the code please feel free to download the R code and run it yourself um, and that's all we have for this video